Okay, now, uh, Pete, one of the questions I had for you is that you had mentioned before that you didn't like the term consciousness field, and you would prefer the term information field. And I was wondering if you could explain why that distinction was made in your discussion. Uh, because to me, the consciousness field deals with consciousness and, the consciousness, and the information field is mostly unconscious. I'd like to double-click on that and get more information on that link. Well, <laughs> the information field holds everything in the known universe. And there's consciousness. Each person has their own, uh, their own consciousness and their own consciousness field. It's like uh, it, it's one of the characteristics of individuality uh, or I'll say information field. It's one of the one of the characteristics of the information field that I I think the best English word for it is soul or spirit. And the individual consciousness field uh, of each person is very very different. And uh, the information field holds everyone's consciousness, while the consciousness field uh, holds uh, each individual's conscious uh, consciousness or their I guess we could say spiritual characteristic, though I use spiritual in a very different method than it's used by religions. Uh, my witness Daniel referred to spirit as the intellect. He said that the intellectual aspects of mind are non-local, that they're not happening in the nervous system at all. They're in the field where those cognitive processes take place. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, uh, they're definitely non-localized. They're in the consciousness field, which is not localized with the person whatsoever. It's everywhere and every when. It's not a device. It's not a uh, part of the neural or or even uh, non-neural anatomy. It's it's a field. It's like a magnetic field or an electric field in some respects, in the respects of a field, but it's uh, non-local even though it appears to be somewhat centered around the actual individual it may be what some people call the uh, the aura, but it also has tentacles, if you would, that extend to through uh, time and space to mm. infinity. There's a Russian scientist named Budakovsky who ta who takes a holographic photograph of a healthy raspberry plant, shines that light into a raspberry tumor and the tumor cells rearrange into healthy raspberry cells and it grows a new plant. Are you familiar with anything like that? Uh, well, I am. Uh, I'm, I wasn't aware of that experiment and would very much like to be because I'm looking for things that I can instrument and observe to try to come to some conclusions, but that to me is uh, would be a necessity that things be that way. Right. And... Uh, uh, for example, one thing I found in human medicine, I, yeah, I'd like to be familiar with the experiment, but uh, for example, I found out in uh, human medicine, for example, uh, I've come to the conclusion and feel I can prove that to uh, any competent neuroanatomist that uh, the DNA is merely a factory that generates the physical part of the body. The DNA gets its information from the informational field and how to do that. So you find that the informational field is eternal and holds the, 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 the spirit or the being or the information of the person in perfection. Whereas the perfection then runs through the factory. If the factory is missing the thing that puts the wheels on, the wheels are going to fall off, if you would. And so 
the the DNA problems that you get with human uh, health and and uh, anatomy are uh, errors that are in the uh, the DNA, which it appears are pretty much passed down through the family tree, and uh, but there's also information that comes down through the family tree, and uh, that's shown by a lot of work that was done by Joseph Chilton Pierce, for example, uh, reported by him in The Magical Child, and there's information that's transmitted to heart tissue, uh, actually brain tissue that's in the heart, and that holds uh, most of the person's information about uh, emotional things and a lot of information about taste. For example, they found people with heart transplants all of a sudden love mustard when they couldn't stand it beforehand. And they find that the person that was the donor loved mustard. Uh, they find that the person that was the donor was a very loving person where the person who lost the heart lost it because of a lot of frustration and a lot of stress and they were a person that wasn't a loving person, now they become a very loving person, and the people around them have no idea how to relate to them. Does, so, e does each person have the same degree of contact with this information field or consciousness field? I, don't, I would doubt that they do, because they're all individual. Uh, I, I, uh, for example, uh, there are people who just seem to be informationally troubled, if you would, which has nothing to do with being, you know, per personally troubled, but they seem to have problems even when you go in and correct things in their... Th this is from a health field, because I spent many years in that field building uh, medical instruments. And we they were all computerized, and we had, you know, years and years and thousands of patient visits uh, that we could go back and take a look at and correlate the long-term data, those instruments have been out there now for uh, 28 years in the marketplace and uh, some 16,000 plus instruments around the, the world and, and uh, uh, well over a million and a half patient visits. So we uh, uh, have correlated that data and have shown that uh, much of this must be the way that things uh, are so, uh, like, uh, the statement that uh, you made was one that I absolutely agree with, that, uh, that out of necessity there has to be uh, an informational field, and out of necessity there has to be something that drives the DNA. And then we find uh, now, uh, we've done some experiments showing that we can uh, generate this field around the body and the body will act as if the DNA were perfect. If they had uh, a genetic disease, the genetic disease goes away. Now with the advent of stem cell research we find out that we can use a person's own stem cells in the body and uh, heighten this field around the body and the cells they had that are replicable cells that had a genetic uh, problem, the genetic problem goes away because the informational field holds the perfect information rather than the flawed information of the, the gene itself. Well, that's like the Budakovsky raspberry thing I told you. Exactly. The tumor exactly. is transformed, yeah. Yep. How can someone strengthen their contact with this field that they have? Do you have any exercises or ways, technology perhaps, anything that they could uh, do? I have technology that could do that and... Uh, that's one of the products that I intend to uh, to come out with once we get the laboratory and factory completely built. Well, that's tantalizing. But I mean, what <laughs> what have you done? Well, what could you do? What could it do for someone? Uh, we'll know that once we get it done and do the testing on it. So uh, I know what I think it would do, and uh, you know we've been very successful with these instruments. The American Medical Association publishes every year. Uh, the number of clinical diagnoses that their doctors, they feel that their doctors got correct. And this year it jumped all the way up to 6% from 5% the previous year. Uh, we have 85% of the patients that are, uh, that use the medical equipment that I'm talking about, 85% of the patients feel that within two days they don't have what they had when they came. Do you believe in acupuncture points? on the body. Well, I, I, I have to believe in them because they're there 
and you can go to Radio Shack or you can go to Harbor Freight and buy a four or five dollar meter and uh, adjust the meter appropriately and run those on the body and find every one of the points, put a little dot there, go compare yourself to an acupuncture chart and you'll look exactly the same. And I did find out how the acupuncture system works. There have been a number of people that, that postulated it, but they didn't show that it worked. And uh, I worked with Dr. Jean-Claude de Ross at the uh, French Institute of Science. He's a very famous acupuncturist. He taught the Chinese acupuncture. Uh, they did away with acupuncture in the 20s and made it illegal, even though it was practiced down every alley. And then during the Cultural Revolution, they brought it back. And the reason for that was they had a huge plague, and acupuncture wouldn't cure the plague, but penicillin would. So the French missionaries brought in penicillin, and so they get it away with acupuncture and went with penicillin. But uh, acupuncture has its definite uses, as does uh, the, the uh, sister of acupuncture, which is Chinese herbal medicine. And uh, it makes sense if you put certain chemicals in the body and certain precursors, you're going to get certain chemical reactions out of the body. So, uh, anyway, uh, the uh, acupuncture system is very interesting. What we did is we injected uh, radioactive potassium into each acupuncture point while the person was under a high-speed CAT scan machine, and we found that the radioactivity moved directly to the organ associated with that point for oh the 3,300 years that the Neijing has been around talking about it, and for the 6,200 years that uh, Ayurvedic medicine has been talking about it. So we found there was a direct correlation to the, not, not only to the, uh, the organ system, but to actual parts of it. For example, down the outside of the thumb, you have a point that gives you information about the entire lymphatic system, uh, just below the first joint, but above the first joint, it talks about the lymphatics that are in the tonsillary ring, and when we inject here, the uh, radioactive material goes to the tonsillary ring. When we inject here, it goes to the whole lymphatic system. And you go down and it, it, it you know, goes on down the body. And the same thing, you know, as you work across the hand, you have lymph and lung and uh, circulation and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Come over here and you have the heart and the small intestine. And you can go down and inject here and it goes to the mitral valve. Here it goes to the, the aorta. Here it goes to the you know, this chamber, that chamber, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then you go down on the feet, the acupuncture points are the same thing. We also found that the acupuncture points, the acupuncture meridians, aren't veins, they aren't vessels. The acupuncture meridians, as they're called, aren't really meridians. They're made up of that of a, the, if you've ever cleaned a, uh, a game animal or a chicken, uh, you'll notice that between the organs, or done surgery, between the organs is a white filmy layer. That layer is built up like a, like a baklava. It's built up in, in a number of layers. And each of those layers is a capacitive, conductive surface, not meant for conducting uh, materials such as radioactive potassium, but it works as does anything in the body. The body's a biomedical, a biological mechanism. It works like the intestine does peristaltically, like the heart does peristaltically. And uh, it's ionic in nature, so it's polarized. And so it pulsates and moves information. So the, that system was an information system. And the points are just above and below each joint. And you have them down each side of the hand. They're around at an area that's about 45 degree angle toward the finger and you can take something like a ballpoint pen I don't see one here but you can you can take a just the, the, the not the point of the pen but the point of the case and you can probe about 45 degree angle just above and below each joint and most people don't know there's a joint just like this joint and this joint and this joint right down here at the wrist and you can probe those places and on once where you're having a problem with the organ or organ system, you'll find a little hard nodule under the skin, just above and below the joint, and about a four, and if you rub back and forth past those ones that aren't too bad, once you don't have a bad problem, 
you'll find the you'll feel a little nodule, but it will actually palpate like it were a little grain of rice filled with a coarse sand. You'll feel a grittiness or a graininess. And you go up below the joint and above the joint. And so you can tell where you have a problem. Now, what acupuncturists don't want you to know is if you take something that's a little milder rounded and rub that point, it'll feel really good if you have a problem there. And if you take a piece of metal and do the same thing, different points will feel differently because the metal things tends to discharge an excess of, uh, of electric field there and the plastic would tend to charge up a point of extra field there. Hmm. And it turns out there's a type of material called an electret. An electret is to electric field like a magnet is to magnetic field. So there's a way of uh, putting a permanent electric charge on a piece of plastic. All the microphones in the little tape recorders you've ever seen, 99% of them are electric microphones where you have a little piece of film with a permanent charge. As the voice hits it, the film vibrates and then there's a metal piece of metal next to it and you measure the voltage between the two, feed it into the device and that's where the voice signal comes from. So you, you can make an electret and rub various points and it'll just feel really good and you rub it one time or 50 times and all of a sudden it'll it'll quit feeling good and you move on to the next point. If you do that on your on your fingers and on your feet you'll feel really really good. It'll normally alleviate almost any problem you have and that's what an acupuncturist does. They can find where those places are that you need to have a treatment and do it that way. Another way to do it is to use an acupuncture needle and stick it into the point to charge it or discharge it. And there's a way to put it in to, to do either. So one of the products that we came up with is a little two little pieces of metal that you can have little uh, indentations on them and you can rub your points and those pieces of metal had a number of holes in them and people ask us what the holes were for if it was critical to the use of the unit. I said no that's where you tie a shoelace and if you loan it to somebody <laughs> you keep one hand with a shoelace around because they won't give it back to you it feels so good. <laughs> and uh, so we have tooling to, to make those, and I probably need to make a, a, another batch of them. But uh, anyway, uh, we we found that these are there. Now it turns out that these points, like this is, this is the lymphatic system here, and this is the lung system here. And if you go clear to the end of where, and there are points up the body, if you go clear to the end of where that meridian is, they all end at a tooth root. The teeth are piezoelectric. When you squeeze a piezoelectric material, it generates a voltage. A or if you take a piece of piezoelectric material and apply a voltage, it expands or contracts. The teeth are piezoelectric. So that's why you should take very good care of your teeth and don't get a root canal unless you absolutely have to have it. And not that you'll die, but your health will go down. And so there's some things that we have. These little devices will make up for that and will charge you up. And so especially people who are missing a lot of teeth uh, get a real, real success from that. And they have very, very pronounced little nodules. And their nodules usually are hard like a rock. And if they keep massaging them from time to time until they quit until it quits feeling, it feels as good as a, a, a scratch on a good itch. And when it quits feeling good, move to the next one. And after a period of time, you'll feel the granularity. And after a period of time, it'll just get softer, and there won't be any any little nodule under the skin. My mother had a large nodule right here, and it finally went away. But she worked on it for a couple of years. It was on the middle finger. I have one here, <laughs> as a matter yeah. of fact, and it comes so and goes. So you're saying that the that the tissues around the organs have an ionic transfer no. system, There's which is to the organ. Not that they're around the organ, but they go all the way up the body. If you start stripping out uh, neural tissue, in fact, it's a it's a kind of an interesting thing most people don't know. But lions and tigers never eat muscle tissue. It's highly toxic. They strip out the vet blood veins, the vessels, the neural tissue. Uh, they eat intestines and they 
and they eat, you know, the heart and the internal organs. They don't eat muscle tissue. Really? Yep. If they feed them muscle tissue and they only give them muscle tissue, they'll eat it, but they get very ill. It's very highly toxic. But people eat all the muscle tissue and throw the good parts away. Does that mean that we shouldn't eat a good raw steak if you're a, if you're a meat eater? Unfortunately. It's very <laughs> obvious that I eat anything that's slower than I am. <laughs> but... Uh, that does mean that. As good as it tastes, it's, uh, it's not good for you. I'm just trying to understand. That's also why the, uh, the kosher, meat, kosher meats have a very specific way of sneaking up on the animal and not alarming them and very mercifully putting them out of their, their demise. Uh, is because they don't want that animal to get excited and release a lot of toxin into the muscle tissue. Hmm. This is not... Whether they know it or not. This is not the typical nervous system you're talking about with sodium... No, there's no there's, it's, there's no nervous system there. That's what I'm right. saying. It's a completely different system. There was a, uh, uh, there was a Korean fellow, uh, Kim Bon Jung, who postulated that there was a, he said that I found the neural system and here are pictures of the little tubules that carry a yellow fluid, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all been recorded and you can find that all over the internet and you can find it all over medical literature. But what it doesn't report is that four years later he committed suicide and said he was sorry for perpetrating such a hoax. There, there isn't that system. People look for it and couldn't find it and finally he just had to admit that he made it all up. Hmm. And so uh, there, that isn't the system. We found how it worked because we injected the radioactive potassium and then we looked at it and then watched it go through the body. And it goes exceedingly fast. If you took blood from the tip of this finger and traced it back to the heart, it doesn't move very fast. It moves very, very slowly. It doesn't race through your veins. And it jerks too. But if you... Uh, uh, inject the radioactive potassium here. We had a, we had to run the we had to get a higher speed CAT scan machine to even see it. It, it really races, and it's the frequency of of this it's like milking a cow or a goat. It's a peristaltic action, and it really races through there. It's a very high frequency. Now you're saying this is all happening. Some interface with the consciousness field or the information field? Informational field. Okay. And yeah, could you explain that? What's well, the energetic no, component? I really, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a couple hour lecture. Well, could I get the elevator version? <laughs> <laughs> There's not really an elevator version. It depends where it is, what it is, what the problem is, which which meridian it is. Okay, if an organ is dysfunctional, why would it why would it matter what's going on in your hand? It doesn't. It then, makes what's going on in your hand. It creates what's going on in your hand. Okay. So because they're the extremities, somehow because we're built that way. You're saying you can either you can either heal it on the hand or you can heal it directly on the organ, right? No. No, no? Not, no, not, I wasn't saying that at all. What I'm saying is that that problems in the organ manifest themselves both physically and informationally at the appropriate points on the body. Now, if you think about it, when you build a car, any car that you've had in the last 10 or 12 years has an electrical connector under the seat and you plug a computer in there and it'll say the oxygen sensor is bad. Uh, the brakes, the brakes are getting weak. It'll say a number of things. So let's assume that somehow, whether divinely or by uh, uh, genetics, we were insulate. We were uh, designed. Uh, why not design a system where you could test the thing? I mean, we don't come with an operator's manual, but maybe we come with a system that is very easy for us to find out what the problem is and then alter things. Now, one thing we found out is that every substance has an informational field around it. We found out that a way to take that substance, place it on a device, and from the device find a 
numerical uh, a numerical signature for that information field. Then we found a way, therefore, to store it in a computer. Now we can take the computer and run that information back out and generate an informational field. We can make that field large so it surrounds the body. And we can then measure in real time at these points, some of which, most of which are acupuncture points and some aren't. There are some acupuncture points that we find don't do anything, even though they're classical points. Now, you know, uh, 6,000 years ago or 3,300 years ago, they didn't have any kind of measurement instruments, so we now have a biofeedback system that will actually do that. A lot of our audience is going to think of the Rife machine when you say these numerical signatures. That's, that's very unfortunate. Okay. Because there's no correlation whatsoever. Has nothing to do with the Rife machine. Okay. You worked for you didn't didn't you work for Royal Rife? I worked for Rife for a period of time, yes, and I know how his instruments work. And uh, it has no bearing on this whatsoever. This is a very gross mechanical type of thing. Okay. And uh, and it doesn't work at all like anybody thinks. So that's another story. But uh, anyway. Uh, Threw me off a little bit here in my in my thinking about this. You can uh, play a signature for Pacific compound. Yeah, we can make a signature for the compound, and what happens is the body will react to that informational field as if you had given the person that substance. And so you can go to a, an acupuncture point and get information from it that you can graph and chart on a machine and it will tell you whether that organ is in in a type of inflammatory process or in a degenerative process and how much, how long it's been there, uh, whether it's winning the battle or losing the battle. And then you can put the person in an informational field from a substance that you think may solve that problem and ask the body, and the body will react exactly as if you'd given that something so you can select a type of treatment. When somebody is given a placebo, are they affecting their own informational field? Absolutely. You, you talk to uh, placebos work 50% of the time. And it isn't because placebos have a physical effect. They have a mental effect in some instances and they have an informational effect. In so some you should instances. be able to affect your own informational field. So yes, stuff. people ask me when I built these very complex computerized machines that do the diagnosis and selection of treatment, they ask me what's your goal for this machine? And I said my goal is when the doctor throws the thing in the dipsy dumpster and just does it. And that can be done. However, the machine takes away his emotional state and his emotional uh, interference with it and the patient's emotional state and the patient's emotional characteristics with it. But uh, one of the machines that I want to come out with in the future is one that's a biofeedback device that allows the patient to put himself in an informational or mental state that affects the problem with the body. And that can, that can be done it's easily be done, and other than gross poisoning or gross overconsumption of something, such, for example, it's very beneficial to have vitamin A. We don't get enough vitamin A in our bodies, but you take too much vitamin A and you'll find yourself gaining water and getting ascites, and, uh, and some people die from it, and many people almost die from it. So uh, too much of a good thing is too much no matter how good the thing is. A lot of people are going to want to know, is anybody using this technology? Is there any doctors uh, there out there? There are, uh, right now in the United States that I know of, 18,000 clinics. 18,000? 18, 18,000 clinics using this technology. I taught seven companies how to make it. Uh, about five other companies came in and stole the information from them, which if they'd come and asked me, I'd have handed it to them. Huh. Because I knew it was going to need 20 or 25 years out there before it got itself established and so what I did was I let other people do it and I ran around in front of them like the man that runs in front of a curling 
iron and sweeping sweeping a pathway for it. I went around in front of them, sweeping a pathway in front of the FDA, and uh, we we uh, had uh, we got a very very good publicity man who's mother had been given, I don't know, eight or ten weeks to live, and we kept her alive for another 17 years. Oh, my gosh. And he felt very uh, happy about that, and so he jumped on our bandwagon. And out of that, uh, it finally ended up, and about 10 or 12 years later, there's actually an alternative medical branch of the FDA, and uh, that branch handles things like we have. And in the meantime, I spent a lot of money and a lot of time and effort and got this device actually approved by so, the FDA. So that was my next question. There must be publications, there must be documentation out well, there. Well, the only documentation I know is when you put my name into a computer, it'll come up and tell what a fraud this device is <laughs> and how it's a quack device. But if you find out who put that in there, you'll find out that he says the same thing about a lot of other things that work. And then you'll, if you go and watch the man, you'll find that the checks that he cashes at the bank are from large pharmaceutical companies and from the government at times. Right. So what name are they going to put into the computer for that device? That I'm not going to say that. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not interested in thousands of people associating that and being able to show their friends that I'm a fraud. Uh, Anybody who wants to know if it's a fraud, come to me. I'll give you the closest doctor. You can go there and ask the doctor whether his three, five, seven, ten thousand patients that went there and two days later walked out without their problem think that it's a fraud. Now, I know it's not 100% placebo because placebos only work 50% of the time. And even though the medical, medical people, the AMA says they're doctors, only get 5% of their clinical diagnoses correct. If they only get, you know, 5% or 6% now this year of their clinical diagnoses correct, what do you think they get correct of the treatment? You know why they say practicing medicine. Or on the other hand, watch the TV show House, and each incidence is they try five or six or seven treatments, almost killing the patient each time, and then find out what the solution is. You know, he's supposed to be the best diagnostician in the world, you know, on television. Uh, but it's very true to life. It comes out of Canada. They're a lot more frank there. And, uh, you, you, you know, you get the picture of practicing medicine. They don't have an idea. They don't have a way to have an idea. And so I'm now ready after 28 years of having this device out there and about somewhere between, you know, probably 1.2 to 4 million or maybe more patient visits behind it, all computerized. Uh, in the medical terminology, it's anecdotal because the patient can't tell you if they're well or they don't have the symptom any longer. That's illegal. But uh, I'm now ready to go up against any one of them because I can prove that my diagnoses with this type of machine are absolutely correct because when they go look with conventional uh Diagnostic uh, tools and equipment. I'll see. I'll see the problem as much as 20 years before it manifests itself in the body, where common medical uh, things contested. How can I prove that? Well, I wait 20 years and prove it. That's what we've done. That's why I have 27 years of of testing done on it. That's why I have people that came and thought it was a fraud and didn't accept the medication. And I. But I watched them over a period of time and saw them eventually die of what I told them they would die from. So I now have enough evidence. I'm ready to go and, and do that, except I'm not going to do that because I don't have any desire to be assassinated. But I have people that have more testicles than I have that are willing to do it. Pardon my 10 years in the Marine Corps. You said there's a lot of clones of this technology out there. People have stolen it from you. and it's... They didn't steal it from me. They stole it from other people. I gave it away. So they couldn't steal it from me. If they'd come to me, I'd have given it to them. Is it variable in terms of how well they work? Like Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They, the first thing I did was in my instrument, when you, when you touch the body, in the beginning, the person doesn't know where the points are. So I put a point locator. And the point locator made a tone, which almost everybody likened it to the sound of a cow that was dying. <laughs> okay? So when... 
I gave the people how to build this thing, they build it, and everybody says, oh, that sounds like a cow dying, so they changed the tone. They eliminated 80% of the effectiveness of the machine. Because oh, the tone carried a lot of information that if the doctor had only persisted with it for a month, he could then hear that tone and he could cut diagnosis time down from 35 to 40 minutes to two and a half to three minutes. Wow. It just became natural. He's, oh, I know what that means. I know what that tone means. Let me try this. Let me try that. And he can dial up on the machine now some 850,000 different substances that are in this world. Uh, all the medications of every medical system known. All the herbals of every herbal system known. All the magic healing potions of every magic healing potion system known. All the chemicals that are out there that are man-made. All the chemicals that you find in nature. All the vitamins, all the minerals, all the pharmaceuticals in the homeopathic pharmacopoeia and in the allopathic pharmacopoeia. Everything's there. So you can go to it. The machine will help you sort those out and find out exactly what will alleviate the problem. And many times you'll find something that will alleviate a problem in the, in the for example, the small intestine, but find that it'll, it'll aggravate the neural system. So you say, oh, well, there must be another medication that'll work and, and not counteract something here. So you can go back and find that particular medication. Now you know what to give. Now you can ask it, okay, if I'm going to give this, how much should I give? It'll tell you an exact amount. And like everything in nature, there's a bell curve produced, a curve that looks like a bell, and you want that medication that's right at the peak of the bell curve. You want just that amount that will produce that reaction. And bang, you give it. And many times when we give the medications to a patient, they'll bounce up and down like they were at Disneyland on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And all of a sudden they go, oh, oh, I've had that pain for 20 years and now it's gone. Did we heal them? No. Did we cure them? No. Why do I say no? Because it's against the law. Do they believe they were healed? Yes. Do they believe they were cured? Yes. What makes the difference? One thing that I think is really important is if this video is out there online, there's going to be a lot of people that want to claim that they have this technology to profit from it. Oh, absolutely. And it may not be the one that you're actually talking absolutely. about. Absolutely. How do we prevent against that? Can you? Is there any? Is there a search term we can give people on Google or, or doctors that actually are using the right one? Or well, the problem is that the first about six thousand doctors I trained, and they had machines that mooed like a cow, and it was really good. And after that, it went downhill. So again, I'm building a laboratory in a factory where I will produce these. And instead of having to do like you have to do today to pay between twelve and fifty thousand dollars for one of the machines, oh, I've got one that's built in a fountain pen, and we'll probably sell it for around ninety nine dollars. Wow! But there are similar heating modalities in existence. Oh, which is there are some that work beautifully. Radionics, but the, well, well, yeah, the, uh, there are radionics I'm machines that. I'm not saying it's the same. I'm just saying that it's something that works. Yeah, works very well. Oh, works very field. well, and it works with the. Um, yes, exactly right. It works through the informational field. Have you heard of the Skanar, the Russian Skanar? I definitely heard of the Skanar, having spent about uh, oh eight months with the people doing it and, really? and uh, working together with them. There's another machine for pain. It's called the Acuscope, which was brought to this country by Tony Nabrensky, who was the KGB man in this country looking for medical technology to send home to Russia. There's a guy named Dr. Hartmut Mueller who built this LED thing that you put yeah. on your skin. Is that another one that you think works? No. It doesn't work? No, I didn't say that. Oh. I said there are things that work a lot better. That's what I meant to say. Okay. But people can also, as you said, massage these points best, on their hands. The best medical machine ever invented were these two little things we call acucombs that you just rub your points with and get well. Is there a way people could build those on their own? Uh, they probably could as soon as they saw one, but it's easier and cheaper to buy one for me because I've paid thousands of dollars for the tooling, and they stamp them out like Great. shells coming out of a machine gun, and we put them in a tumbler and tumble them, and, and they actually have a electric material that we invented to, to actually do the charging. And it's interesting in that you can take one of the units and do it. And by the way, you can find out how you'll react to any food, 
one of the best things is that anything that goes into the body, you say, how does this, how do my organs react to that? There's a reason that the highest paid doctor is the anesthesiologist. It's because he has to pay the most insurance. And I think, you know, I, I may be wrong, you'd have to check what it is these days, but when I was working on it, two out of every hundred people were killed by the anesthetic. This one. thing will tell you exactly because this part, this finger and the distal side of the middle finger tells you about food absorption here and allergy here. And it will tell you whether you have an allergic dispensation toward that medicine. It'll tell you that, 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 that anesthetic, it'll tell you how your body will react to it. How does it tell you? By making an indication. What? There's an indication on a meter and on a chart. And when you learn how to read the meter and learn how to read the chart, which can be taught in approximately one minute, uh, you can tell whether you're going to have an allergic reaction or not. Another thing we found was uh, out of an animal, a uh, major university's animal husbandry department, we found that there are 30 C substances that all humans and all animals are allergic to. Most of them are phenolic compounds, have a six-sided benzene ring in the molecule, and a couple are hormones and a couple are proteins. And we found out that we can measure here and we can find out exactly, if you have allergies, exactly what you're allergic to. And then we can take that material and, and prepare it homeopathically and give you a couple drops under the tongue and that allergy will disappear entirely. And then after a period of time it may come back and we'll find that you need a homeopathic remedy of a different, what they call potency or strength. And then you take that, and sometimes it takes you three or four days to chase this thing around the, around and find out exactly what you need. But eventually, you'll get to an endpoint, and you won't have that allergy. And as far as I know, when we've tested people now for 28 years, nobody's ever had an allergy come back. Wow. And we're dealing strictly with an informational system here that modern science refuses to... Uh, to do, but it doesn't seem to make much difference to those people who had allergies and don't. That modern science doesn't like it. It doesn't. It doesn't fit their paradigm, which is wrong. I just want to say, on camera here, that what we are very clear about, having spent quite some time talking with you, that you're not trying to get rich through any of this. You want to make this technology. No, I, I, I don't. No, I have no need to make any money. The only reason I want to build the things is so they're built right and they move like a cow. <laughs> Dying cow. <laughs> because that gives the, that lets the doctor do the treatment for much less, or the diagnosis for much less money. And remember, the doctor only uses this to help him in making his diagnoses. Diagnoses can't be made by a machine, only made by a doctor. Yeah. And that's why in the beginning we only sold them to card carrying AMA, card carrying MDs. Then we sold a few to uh, chiropractors. We sold a few of them to osteopaths, a few of them to naturopaths. And then uh, the first person to have one that was a, uh, uh, a veterinarian was the veterinary commissioner for the state of Nevada. And uh, she started using them. And then we have now, uh, I, I quit keeping track when I started trying to keep in front of these people and keep them out of trouble for using them. And we've not had any trouble uh, in using them uh, because we kept them out of trouble. And uh, anyway, uh, at the time, all oh, this was maybe 18 years ago, there were about 350 veterinarians using them. And they were working perfectly. They could find out what problems animals had and how to solve the problem. Okay. Folks, we're coming to the end of our third hour, and there may be a number of other topics which we want to touch on before, well, while we have the opportunity. In fact, I know there are a number of other topics. I've had my share of Cherry. David, is there more things you'd like to pick up on? I know that Kerry's got some questions too. Yeah, um, I'm, just, I'm just sensitive to all the emails that are going to be coming in. People are going to want to know how to buy these little plates. So if you say you can machine them, can when, once you're ready to do that, can you give us some if, information? If I so had orders, uh, I could probably ship within two weeks. Okay. 
and uh, I can't tell you what they cost. I know that one of the plates, out of necessity, needs to be copper. And I know that one of the plates, the factory that used to make my electric material, has gone out of business. Hmm. So either I'll have to make it or find a factory that does it. But we have tooling that fits in a machine called the Yamada punch press that punches it out faster than you can even see, and then it just has to be tumbled in the right combination of things to make it smooth and easy to handle so it doesn't have sharp edges on it. But it's and not that expensive is the bottom line. It's not really that expensive. I would the copper in it now costs about seven or eight dollars for the copper plate and probably much the same for the uh the electric plate. And then we have to stamp it and process it. It comes in normally in a little uh, uh carrying case with a separation between the two okay. and a little set of cards that you can fold out that shows all the points on the hand all the points on the feet, so there are pressure points, whether uh, things that you deal with uh, indigestion and headaches and that kind of thing. Well, you have your first order <laughs> right now. <Yeah. laughs> I've taken them to, oh, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred health fairs and uh, Psychotronic Association meetings hmm. and Global Science Congress and Tesla Society meetings and dowsing meetings and so forth, and I've never taken them I started with taking 20 and then I take 50 and then I take 100 and I've never found a time that it didn't sell out before noon right on the first day and uh, so and once I sell three or four then everybody is you people can't put it down so they're standing there doing it. people go, where'd you get that what does that do and the guy here let me try it <laughs> no I don't have a shoelace so then I start giving a shoelace with them so they get them back so uh, anyway, uh, uh, people like the way it makes them feel. It likes the way they make their hands feel. And they determine by themselves without uh, any help from the government that they actually do something for them that they like, and so they buy them. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's. I think it's really important to note that the healing is within. We all have this power to heal ourselves. Well, like I said, in any medical device that I've ever done, and I've also, by having the machine as a biofeedback tool, I found a number of substances that do miraculous things for the body. And Such as? And out of all those substances and all the machines, the best thing I ever did uh, was the plates, and they're not expensive. And what I tell people is, if you think about this right, you can just throw the plates away. Which brings up another device that I'll be putting out that looks like a cigarette pack. Oh, that's a bad thing to use. Like a pack of playing cards. Maybe that's even bad to use. But it's a little device that has a headband that you have a little electrode you soak with salt water in the front and the rear. And it measures salt water? Salt water. Just regular salt water, table salt. Uh, and you uh, put that on and it makes a tone and we give a little cassette tape that makes a tone and you can learn to with your brain you can learn to match it's like it's like if i hum or whistle yankee doodle ten times you can hum yankee doodle and if i do mary had a little lamb you can do mary had a little lamb this makes a sound and you learn to generate that sound by holding your tongue right by seen a watchmaker work. The position of your tongue changes no, no, the tone? No, no, no. That's what I didn't want to say. Oh. If you watch someone that's doing precision work, like an engraver or a watchmaker, they do it this way. Okay. Yes, they have to hold their tongue in a certain way, and it lets them do things. But you don't necessarily have to hold your tongue right. You learn how to hold your mind right. And so this gives off a, a, an even pitch, but it, the no, pitch is varying? No, it's not an even pitch. It's a varying pitch. It sounds like whistling a tune. Okay. And so you learn to make that tune by thinking right, and you'll eventually, you put it on, and if you do different things mentally, you'll get different tones. So you learn to hold your those tones so you get the tone that was on the little tape. And when you get to that point, you can then alter these things without the plates. You can just do it mentally. This is going to make me sound stupid, but... People in the audience are going to compare that to the Monroe tapes with the binaural synchronization in the yeah. ears. Is there any relationship with those? None whatsoever. I didn't think so. 
Is this like an EKG? Like it's a brain nope. weight? No. Okay. What, 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 what's making the tone? A electrical field that's generated by the body. So why these two points then? Because those are the ones that work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so is it only used for healing or, or are there well, other... You can do, the, 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 my favorite thing to do with it is find somebody that's into uh, to brainwave analysis and brainwave work and go have them implement me and then play Yankee Doodle for them with my brain. <laughs> They immediately say, oops, the machine is broken, we've got to fix it, because nobody can learn to do that. Sorry, I could teach anybody to play Yankee Doodle with their brain in two weeks. But I mean, are there... And then once you learn to do Yankee Doodle, you can do Mary Had a Little Lamb in about ten minutes. Let's say you have a guy that can move things with his mind, he has telekinesis, and yep. he makes a song on this thing. He makes a song, and you buy the song from him, like buying an MP3, MP3 thing... <laughs> And you make that song, chances are very good you're going to run that little ball bearing around through the maze with your head. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's very interesting. And uh, I can tell you that government agencies have bought those by the thousands. So How would you get an electrode on the back of your head? Isn't that going to go through your hair? Well, surplus-wise, I bought about 10,000 little fold-out razors that are used to scrape hair off the body when the oh, surgeon yeah. needs to sew it up. You just put a little shaving cream on it and scrape a little piece off. And and there's, I'm gonna, there's a headband you wear? There's a headband you wear and there's two little electrodes made out of a special metal and they have a little little cotton sock over them and you soak this, you take water and you put it in a little bowl and you stir water and salt together until no more salt will dissolve and you dip those in there and squeeze them out a little bit and put them and Use a, a uh, little washcloth with some soap on it and wipe uh, the grease off the area here and the grease off the area back here that you've balded and put it on, and it works just fine. Wow. How precise do you have to be in placement? Does it have to be right oh, smack on? No, within a couple inches. Hmm. No, it doesn't go on the third eye. That's all. A lot of your people will ask that. It goes in a different spot. Okay. But it's very easy to tell where it goes because you put it on and it isn't making brain, we'll call it brain wave noise, that's not what it is. But then anything that isn't hooked directly to the brain isn't brain wave noise anyway. I have a 60 second question before this tape goes out. Why would the agencies be interested in stuff like this? Oh, I don't know that I can say that. Okay, we we'll leave it to our imagination. <laughs> leave it to your imagination. Okay. Uh, I can tell you that there were a lot of them bought at... Uh, um, SRI, and uh -huh. a lot of them were bought by. Uh, to teach remote influencing. I didn't say that. I didn't even hint that. I said and that. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Oh. <laughs> Not unless you'd like to visit. <laughs> you will have a visit if you make it. Okay. And you won't like it been involved with trying to build uh, flying saucers, we usually found that flying saucers, if you look at most of the movies, there always seems to be a robot involved with it.